एंड वेलकम टू द प्रिज्ञा अरोरा शो वेयर वी डिस्कस लॉ एंड ऑन्टरप्रिन्योरशिप विद पीपल हु हैव बीन देयर एंड डन दैट माय नेम इज प्रिज्ञा अरोरा फाउंडर ऑफ पीए लीगल एंड इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी लॉ फर्म एंड आवर गेस्ट फॉर टुडे इज मिस्टर गैरी मिल्स ही इज अ सक्सेस कोच एंड एन अटॉर्नी अ ब्लेंड ऑफ the combination that we did for today's show so thank you gary for being on the show and uh, accepting our invitation well prigya thank you for having me i'm really honored to be a guest on your show it's just great yeah so gary let's start with our fun warm up question what is one thing in life you cannot live without well other than my wife and my family obviously it would have to be my two dogs i have two beautiful english goldens they're so sweet so kind and no matter how cranky i am when i walk in they run up to me wag their tails and just want to be petted and they're really the best example i can find in my life of true unconditional love all they want to do is make me happy and and that's fantastic wow i absolutely love this answer so i'm also uh, i have a dog owner i have two dogs and i know even if i have a bad day <laughs> there is someone to love me <laughs> they're always happy with you aren't they no matter how yeah. unhappy you are they're always happy with you Ooh. what kind of dogs do you have i have german shepherds nice nice <laughs> so i know whenever i enter room they want to be near me they want to stay with me they want to be right beside me <laughs> yeah. I know just what you mean. So that really it's a wonderful gift. It's a yes, treasure yes. from God that we have those wonderful creatures to keep us happy and comfortable and feel loved all the time. Yes, definitely. So Gary, uh, now coming to your life story. So can you share your life story and how did you become the person you are today? Like transition, like how how did you become a lawyer and then a success coach? Sure. So I I wanted to be a lawyer really my whole life. I I followed in the footsteps of my older brother who uh practiced law his whole life and and so that was always my lifelong dream. And I wanted to be a lawyer because I wanted to help and serve other people and and find solutions to their problems. Um after doing trial work for about 30 years um i decided to do family law and divorce work not because i'm in favor of divorce or i encourage it but because when people are in that place it's one of the hardest things they ever have to go through it's so stressful they're full of fear sometimes they feel like they're a victim or they're angry or they're hurt and and they can't see what their future looks like they can't visualize the answer they they can't put their arms around what it will look like to be by myself with the kids how will we make it work with money etc and i like to support them and paint an image of them and because i've done so many i know what it will look what it could look like for them and i try to give that them that image and and one of the most fulfilling things is when i finish a really hard case for my client went through a lot of stuff and she sends me a nice note just a handwritten note obviously she paid me a legal fee and all that but she wants to say something more and just thanks me for being there for her and or him and and helping helping them get through that um i recently relocated from maryland where i've been a lawyer for 43 years and moved to north carolina um sort of semi retirement from the practice of law but i moved here with my wife who's a director of nursing so cuz that's where her job is and and then i had some time and i thought what what can i what do i want to do i i could i love golf i could play golf all the time i could go to the gym i could play with my dog what do i want to do that really fulfills me and and i've learned that there's just so many people who were excited when they passed the bar and became a lawyer and yet 5 years or 10 years later they're miserable they're overworked they feel stressed they feel angry they hate what they're doing and and i want to help them to to enjoy the practice of law like they like they uh, once did um part of my background is i am sober i'm a recovering alcoholic i've been sober for 30 years and in that role i was chair of our lawyer assistance committee in maryland and we would help lawyers and judges who were struggling with some mental health issue whether it was addiction or depression or anxiety and kind of and it was a wonderful service and we helped 
some people, miraculous stories. The trouble is some of the, those folks were kind of so far down in that hole, it was really hard to help them. They often didn't think they needed help. And I want to help attorneys who are feeling stressed and overwhelmed before it gets to that point, when, when they can still blossom and flourish um, as an attorney. Because it's such a wonderful profession, but so many just feel so stressed and unhappy. And and I want to help them have the joy and the fulfillment back from being a lawyer. Wow, Gary. So, you know, this, this session, I think it's, it's, go, it's going to be so beautiful because I relate to your story so much. Uh, I see my father, uh, he's also a recovering alcoholic. He has been sober since last three years three years but congratulations yeah. to him that's fantastic yeah so I also come from an alcoholic family where I have seen a lot of uh, addiction to alcohol and how things are and what effects does it have on the family and I think this cause in itself is very very close to my heart that I also want to help people whenever I see someone specifically old I see my father in them <laughs> And then, then I'm like, oh my God, I need to help them. I, I, I need to tell that what are, what are the ways they can, uh, you know, come out of alcoholism so that the family is not uh, affected at large. Yes, it really is a family disease. And, yes. and, you know, the alcoholic hurts so many people, causes so much pain in so many people's lives, their spouse, their children, their neighbors, their partners at work. And recovery is such an amazing gift because when one person heals, the whole family can heal. The whole, everyone who knows that person gets to see, experience the joy of being in recovery. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. I agree with this so much. So alcoholism is a family disease. Whoever is listening it to is. this, even if an alcoholic is not recovering, the family needs to recover. <laughs> Well, congratulations to your dad. That's wonderful. Just kind of an interesting aside. My dad got sober three years before I did. Wow. And it was his getting sober that he didn't preach to me. He didn't tell me what I should do, but he was a power of example. And, mm -hmm. and I knew that there was a program that worked. It worked for him. I saw the changes. And when I was ready, the program was there for me. Is it Alcoholics Anonymous? It is, although because of our traditions, I don't usually say that, but yes, I, yeah. and, and yeah. that that there are a lot of programs for recovery and, mm -hmm. and um, there are a lot of tools out there. I think it's important that everyone know that if you have any issues with any addiction or mental health issue, it's okay to ask for help. It's not mm -hmm. a sign of weakness. It's yeah. really a sign of strength. And, you know, when I first got sober, being in recovery wasn't something... I felt there was something to be ashamed of. I, I thought I should be ashamed to be an alcoholic. But I think in this country, and maybe in India too, our culture has come so far where when people are in recovery, people respect that yes. and compliment them. It's not any longer something to be ashamed of. Correct. So I just feel that if we get a gift, we should transfer it to people. So I don't know. I don't know who will listen to this, but maybe somewhere there is someone who listens to this conversation and wants to get sober and maybe connect with us. <laughs> well, I think the most important thing for anyone who listens to this, who, who is having any issues is to know there is an answer mm -hmm. and it really works. Yeah. It really works. Mm -hmm. and, and they can have the life of their dreams. Mm -hmm. um, all they need to do is be willing to speak to someone in confidence, complete confidence. Yeah, definitely. So now coming back to our uh, podcast and the journey around it. So you help people solve their personal problems as well as professional problems. So what motivates you? Like what was your concern that you thought that, okay, this is, this is the reason which I'm doing this? So many people during my life have helped me and coached me and mentored me, beginning with my dad, um, my recovery sponsor. Um, I told you I'm an avid golfer. I started playing after eighth grade. I've always had a coach, not been the same coach during all those years, but I haven't had many. And, and they always helped me to be good at that. And, and I realize 
during my career, um, I've helped lawyers in my office. I've helped other men. I've helped other lawyers at other offices be as successful and good as they want. And, and that's what really fills me when I help someone and I see them grow and progress and become what they never thought they could be. That really makes me happy and fulfilled. And law is, is a difficult field and we can make good money doing it. But if we're not fulfilled, then we're missing something because stuff, money, cars, houses, that never fulfills us. It's never, it's never, if you have something you want more, it's never the answer. But I find my, my personal fulfillment from supporting other people and helping them become the person they never thought they could be. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. So, uh, so Gary, do you have certain kind of processes? Like if, if there is a person, you feel that this person is somewhere in a mental prison and they need to break their barriers to come out. So do you have certain processes or how do you start? Do you start by speaking to them, understanding or guiding them? What, what is the process? Can you brief us something about that? So um, I tailor the process to each person because each person's needs and obstacles are different. But I always begin with an hour call where I let the person share where they are, what's going on, what their goals are, and what their obstacles are. And I'll ask them things like, you know, what causes you the most stress during your day? What keeps you awake at night? Um, what, are, what are the biggest hurdles you have to overcome to get to where you want to do. So we do kind of a um, getting to know each other and understanding what their problems are. And then I tailor what they need to help them uh, with that, whether it's um, managing their day, whether it's um, handling the stress of work, whether they're burdened with fears of I'm not good enough or I'm not going to make it or, or whatever. Um, and sometimes because I managed my own law firm for 30 years, sometimes it might be more of a business consulting. Um, you know, should I hire another paralegal or how do I handle my bookkeeping? I want to be a lawyer, but how do I handle paying the bills and figuring out my finances? So whatever it is, I tailor it to them. And, um, you know, a big part of what I coach people on is gratitude, that if they're really, you know, so many of us have so many things to be grateful for, but we think about the one thing that didn't work that day. Mm -hmm. You know, we think about what, what I, we didn't like instead of thinking of all the things that worked out well. We kind of tend to forget the ones, the cases that worked out well, and the one that sticks in our crawl is the client who was mad or the lawyer who was nasty to us or something like that. Definitely. It's, it's an eye-opener, you know. We keep stressing about me. I think there is, there is some kind of addiction with stress also especially which lawyers have they can't live you know they love drama they love excitement they love stress so they like being in that domain so I think that is an eye-opener that we can leave that aside and probably think of whatever good things are happening around us I think that's true you. Yeah. So, uh, so Gary, as a success coach, what do you think is the most important lesson for your students? I think the most important lesson is to think about what they have control over and what they don't. Um, wow. I'm a big believer in what we call the surrendering prayer, prayer to accept the things we cannot change, change the things we can and the wisdom to know the difference. So many times in my life, I was trying to change things I had no power over. I'd be trying to change you, or I'd be trying to change the circumstances in my life. And I'd be frustrated because somebody I worked with wasn't acting towards me the way I wanted them to. And once you realize that you have no power over those people, but you have complete power over yourself and how you think and how you feel. Like I used to say, you know, he makes me so mad. Well, today, no one has power to make me mad. No one can make me angry unless I let them. It's, it's a choice I make. And, and so if someone is acting inappropriately, mm -hmm. I, I may not like it. I may get frustrated, but then I think, what can I do? What do I do about it? I, if it's a lawyer, I may send him an email. I may pick up the phone or I may just ignore him and just let him, let him be. I have one of those things going now with a client who's just upset about something and he's just way off. I'm not going to let him bother me. 
I'm just not, I'm going to answer them. And, and once you realize that you have the power over other people and that they can live their life the way they want and complete power over yourself, that no one can really hurt me unless I let them. Um, it's very freeing. It's very freeing to know that, I mean, getting up today and being happy is a choice. Yeah. You know, I had a frustrating day yesterday. I knew we had this podcast. My technology was all messed up. I was frustrated. But when I wake up today, it's a choice how I want to approach my day. And, and I can choose to be happy. And I can choose, realize if I get a bad thought in my head, a selfish thought, a thought of frustration, if I'm frustrated about something, what can, instead of being frustrated about my computer, I had someone come in and fix it last night, you know, and then it was done rather than just storming around. And although I did that a little bit, but instead of doing that, you know, what can I do? I can fix a computer and I can choose to be happy. Correct. Absolutely. So I also sleep and wake up with the serenity brain. <laughs> so I, th I think that is an on off alarm for me. Like, okay, I need to get back and I need to sleep peacefully. <laughs> So, right. so yeah, so I understand this, that we, we get, we, we have so much urge to control people, to control things and to control everything in our life. And we also say that sometimes, you know, we say we are the creators, we can control, okay, I can control him, I can control her, but no, at the end, when you choose that you cannot control anybody and you can, all you can do is work on yourself. I think there. Uh, somewhere there the freedom lies <laughs> exactly you're exactly right it's all about feeling free yeah. because we may i may think how someone should run their life better say an adult child i may think what they should do but they're going to do what they're going to do <laughs> and it's frustrating when i try to control someone and they don't do what i think they should do then i'm frustrated but i have no power over that yeah. um so i can let that go and be free of all those worries about all those people that I can't control. And I can just be an example of gratitude and peace and acceptance. Wow, awesome. So uh, Gary, now what do you think is the biggest advantage for being a, law a lawyer and anything that you want to share from your law journey that, you know, okay, this is the biggest advantage of being a lawyer and this is why lawyers should perceive and make themselves better human beings and something that has changed your life. So, uh, uh, so the biggest advantages of being a lawyer is, is we're trained and educated to help people. Um, whatever field we're in, are you in IP? Um, you have clients who have problems and you help them solve those problems. They don't know what the answers are. They don't know what the process is. To you, it's second nature. And whether it's a business or whatever is your client, you can really help them achieve their goals. For me in family law, as I, I shared earlier, it's so such a dark place when they come to me. And I can help them. You know, it's not fast, but in two years, I can help them recreate their life and, and really enjoy it. And it's just so fulfilling to take the talents and skills we have and use it to help people with whatever kind of problems that they have. Awesome. Yeah, I think uh, like law is considered as a noble profession and it is for this reason because we have that, uh, I'll say, uh, privilege that we can help people regarding the actual circumstances in which they live in. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. So Gary, uh, I know people struggle with something a lot, which is building habits and breaking habits and specifically lawyers, because they, uh, I think not now, but three years ago when I was uh, too much involved in some 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 dilemma about life and law and leading a life of a lawyer lawyer kind of a stuff it was like okay I wake up with work I sleep with work I do not have anything else in my mind except work now I have slowly you know recovered from that phase of my life and I am trying to experiment with work and with life both trying to be happy so Mostly when lawyers are in that space that, 
okay we get up with work with sleep with work to all the time during our 90% of the time when we are awake we think about is work so at that time people need to break habits to build new habits so can you give us some examples or and any uh, knowledge or wisdom around building or breaking habits sure one of the things i've seen a lot with lawyers is that they get burned out because mm -hmm. they don't set boundaries um you know now that i moved into family law i give my clients my cell phone and and i tell them you don't call me at saturday night at 10 just to talk but only if it's something urgent but yet um, it's created a pattern where I'm always, I can always be on my phone. I can always be interrupted. And too many lawyers, um, we, we get so addicted to our work. We want to please our partners. We want to solve our clients' problems. And it starts interfering with the rest of our life, with our, with our spouse, with our kids, with our German shepherds and our English goldens, because mm -hmm. we're always, and if we're not working, we're thinking about working and we're thinking about what we have to do. And we have to kind of build a little bit of a wall so that when we're home and we're with that family, that's our only focus. Yeah. That's all we should be thinking about. Because if I'm home with my beloved wife and, and family, and I'm thinking about a case I have on Monday, I'm ruining that quality time. And, you know, we only have a certain number of days here. I don't know how many. It, it could be one. It could be many. I don't know. But every day is a gift. And every day I spend it being somewhere else and not present in the moment, I'm throwing it away. Um, I heard an analogy the other day. I think the number is $68,400. That if I said to you, Prigya, I'll give you $68,400, you'd say, sure. And I would say, but what if the one condition is you have to spend, spend it all today in the next 24 hours? And if you don't, you have to give it back. You said, sure. And you would have $68,400 and you'd be very thoughtful and purposeful and intentional about how you spent that money. What do I need? What's the best way to spend it? But you also have 68,400 seconds in your day. Okay. And it's important to be as purposeful and intentional with, because every one of those is a gift. And, and if we can, if we waste it on social media or for the family and we're haven't set a boundary and we're, thinking about work or answering an email from a lawyer. So to me, it's so important for lawyers to treasure their time. It's our time is a gift. A lot of lawyers feel like, oh, I don't have enough time. I can't do it, I have enough time. How many times do people say that? Well, we have time. We have 24 hours. We have a choice about how we spend it. And we should set some boundaries between work and our private life so we can be fulfilled in both of them. Yes. So I, I teach them tools about how to set boundaries and what to do and how to be healthy and well at home while still working hard at the office. Wow. I think very rightly said that building boundaries is very, very important, especially uh, probably we need to fix time that after this time, we'll not think about work. This is the time for my family. This is the time for eating this is the time eating because uh, when we eat these days we generally eat with a television or a movie or I don't know with what but we, we are not with food we are not actually enjoying food so I think that is also one part that whatever we are doing maybe pursuing a hobby eating being with family we need to be there and not thinking about something else one of the habit, one of the ways to help people break that habit is to really plan each day. Yeah. And, you know, as lawyers, we may plan when we are, we're meeting with a client in our office, we may plan when we have a deposition, but the rest of it is unplanned. We okay. should have a plan for when we go to bed at night. For me, it's 1030. We should plan on when we wake up, 630. We should plan that I'm going to walk the dog. Everything should be planned. What I'm going to work on between nine and 10 and plan in there a break time. So you get to go outside and get some fresh air, plan a lunchtime when you actually take a break, are mindful about what you're eating, and you may connect with a person on the phone to get a break from the stress, plan our exercise or a hobby or a recreation, whatever you like to do, plan your, and plan everything so that then you're mindful when you're having dinner with your family. And to me, my 
family background, that was always very special, our dinner time. That was when we all got together, we all talked. And now sometimes people get, to, I go in restaurants, people are on their phones while they're eating with their spouse and their kids, you know, instead of being truly present. Correct. So yeah, for this also, uh, people, a lot of people think like if I plan my whole day, every minute, every second, every hour, then it is mostly that I feel caged or there, there, there is a lot to do, a lot of planning required. But what I feel generally, because when I started it, I used to feel that it, okay, it's a pressure, but now it's been time that I have been doing this and I feel like it's freedom. Actually, I know that morning 6.30, okay, I need to wake up and go, go on a walk. I need to come back, take a shower, have breakfast. I do not have to think about, you know, okay, now, now what, now it's 8.30, now what should we do? I have everything on my calendar. I Good, that's great. Calendar. That's it, great. It gives a lot of freedom as well, instead of giving stress. That's so true. Well, yeah. I agree with that. Well done. Thank you so much, Gary. So Gary, now coming to our rapid fire round, uh, answer these three questions very quickly. This is called a three to one rapid fire round. So let's begin with the first one. Three things you are grateful for. Uh, the first and most important is my sobriety, because if I wasn't sober, I'd have nothing. Um, the second would be for my wife because she teaches me so much every day about how to be generous and caring and, and loving. Um, and the third is for the skills that God's blessed me with that I can help and serve other people. Wow. Two traits you think are useful for a legal career? Um, our ability to listen is so important. So many times lawyers want to talk without listening. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the other is our ability to help people solve problems through our, our legal skills and our intellect and our training. And one aspiration you have for the future? My aspiration is to really grow my service where I help lawyers and other professionals be the best they can be. Um, I have so much background and experience that I'm just bursting with enthusiasm to help other lawyers, because I think there's such a need um, to, to support lawyers because they're just so overwhelmed and so stressed. And, and our profession can be so gratifying and so fulfilling yeah. and freeing. Like we, you talked about freedom by not, letting, not trying to control other people. Um, so many of us get sucked into getting upset about things we can't control. And we're not, we lose our freedom when we do that. And I want to help them understand how they can be truly, personally free as a, a successful attorney. Great. Uh, so, Gary, thank you so much for your answers. And now, can you... Thank can you for you, having me. Can you share some key takeaways for young lawyers and entrepreneurs to conclude? Uh, I think the main thing is to focus on their journey and where they want to get to, to understand what their goals are. When I speak to someone on the phone, I say, where do you want to be five years from now? And they often say, I don't know. I've never thought about it. And, and it's good to have a vision and a goal of where we want to be. And I think the other thing is to focus not so much on the stresses in our day, but to focus on the gifts, you know, focus on how we've helped somebody, um, focus on you know, I, I encourage people every night to go to bed and think about what that day happened that day that was good, that they're grateful for. Wow. So focus on goals and vision and think of something that you are grateful for. So thank you yes. so much, Gary, for being on the show and giving us your time and wisdom. I'm sure the audience is going to love this episode. Thank you, Prig. Yeah, I appreciate it very, very much. Thanks for letting me speak to, to you and, and to your audience. Thank you. Hey there. Thank you for attending today's session. If you enjoyed today's session, do follow our channel and consider sharing it with a friend. My name is Prigya Arora, daughter of inspiring parents, alumna of IIT Kharagpur, engineer turned lawyer and entrepreneur and now founder of PA Legal, where we help creators and innovators protect their intellectual property. Thank you. Thank you.